this organism, hmm, this complex exists because it is hungry for something. It is a born lover. It exists to love. In one context I'll call it a lover, in another context I'll call it a beggar. In the third context I might say it is just a delusional incompleteness. But one thing is certain, it wants something. There is a want in love, there is a want in hunger and there is a want in incompleteness. When that which we want is close to us, near to us, it is fulfillment. It is the climax of life. It is as if life has reached its end. But time still continues, body still continues and if time is still continuing then there is change. Something else happens. And this body is habituated to love one thing but be attracted to the other. Hmm? That something else also becomes attractive. And then the intimacy is lost. Then there is separation. There is separation and then there is again craving. The cycle continues. If one is really intense and honest in his love one does not want or allow the proximity to be lost so when other things become important and dominant There is an alertness, as if one is getting cautioned or warned. The danger shows up. Right now I am close, but I am being lured and tempted away. I am elaborating to you in the language of love. That which is traditionally a thing of knowledge and realization. Hmm? We have just talked about observation in the language of love. Observation is the detection of the enemies of love. The danger has been spotted. So can this thing be completely dissolved like this can never get out of system like born human beings we are bound to get? When one is in 
let's say physically, one does not ask, how soon can I compete in the Olympics? One just asks, how to recover from where I am? Can the ego be completely dissolved? Is it possible to be absolutely one with the absolute? These are all meaningless questions. If one is suffering, then one must ask for relief, relief and more relief.